intros currently celebrating one of my friend's birthdays one of the friends that we're talking about is one of the early people that was involved in close to broke happy birthday to you christian today's episode is a special one because we're getting to celebrate his birthday and moreover we're gonna go play some poker now so let's hop into today's session and uh, yeah let's hop into some poker now and just like that i'm gonna welcome you folks back to another wonderful session here at the home casino the commerce Playing 510, I'm in for 1500 to start things off with. Just before we get into today's episode, huge shout out to Yalil. I hope I'm not chopping up your name. I met him at the Commerce, a subscriber of the vlog. If you guys ever want to say hello, please don't ever feel ashamed or worried. It is an honor and a pleasure to meet each and every one of you. Uh, if I have the time, I'll give it all to you guys. I, I feel forever grateful for the support. Either way, it's enough of cheesing your buns. I don't know if that, what is it like buttering your 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 buns i don't know anyways let's hop into today's episode the very first hand we're going to be going over is a good example of defending the blinds under the gun raises to 35 buckaroonies i'm in the big blind it folds all the way to me i looked on five six offsuit not a great hand but a fine defend as it won't be correlating too much with his under the gun raising range i make the call for 35 dollars and we're going off to a flop that comes king seven six rainbow flopping bottom pair here Feeling pretty comfortable, we have a bunch of backdoor equity, and our hand can be definitely good here. I check it over to my opponent, he does a pretty standard c-bet of $50, a little bit on the larger side for sure, but I mean I don't think he's really worried about bet sizing. I make the call as this is pretty standard, we're going off to a turn card that comes with four diamonds. This does bring the backdoor flush draw, and the one thing I do definitely consider at this time is, should I be betting for equity denial and to balance myself when I turn, you know, a straight in this situation? If I turn to pair, there's a couple things going through my mind, as I mentioned, but I feel like if I'm betting here, I might be slightly over bluffing. I think I'd rather have maybe a suited hand that contained a diamond here. And with my specific hand, I think it plays a little better as a check call than it does as a lead here. But at the end of the day, I don't know. I'm sure this is fine to sometimes mix in a lead, but in this situation, I don't mind just checking and calling or checking and evaluating. So I go ahead and make the check. Luckily for us, our opponent checks it back, so we get to realize our equity for absolutely zero dollars. Going off to a river card that comes in nine of clubs. This is another interesting situation where I don't think I can ever get a better hand to fold, really, unless it's specifically like tens or jacks. But even then, I just don't see my opponent ever folding. So I go ahead and check here, hoping that he checks back some form of weird hand that has showdown, like ace high. He does end up checking it back, and he shows ace queen offsuit. We're going to go ahead and win this hand here. Luckily for us, it was one of those hands. Although our bet would have worked on the turn, I think that, you know, it, I'm in the middle about it. Obviously, it's great to, you know, deny equity against a holding like that. But the issue then becomes, am I ever going to get a hand like tens, nines, queens, or jacks to fold to just one bet? Feels unlikely. So either way, I feel like we played that hand okay. Moving right along here, like you guys understand, and I, I almost have to remind myself, is that I do like playing aggressive, but there's a time and a place where it can be even more beneficial. In this next hand, we have an early position under the gun raised to $35. Middle position, who's definitely the loosest player at the table, preflop makes the call as well. The cutoff makes a call, and we look down at king, queen of clubs here from the button. We're playing around $1,500 or $1,600 effective. And the one thing I do want to add here is that I think that this place is a really great situation where I can three bet and isolate against one of the looser middle position callers, or... If I can, you know, I can call here at some frequency, but I think that works better if I'm playing heads up against just the one early position raiser. But now that I have two, you know, callers in the middle, I feel like isolating and taking down this free money with almost $120 in the pot for free, or at least dead in my eyes, I feel like is a better play. So after a bit of thinking, I decided to three bet to $175. If we get called, it's not the end of the world. We have a ton of equity with this hand. And if we get four bet against, it's all right. We can make a pretty easy fold. Under the gun pretty quickly decides to make the fold. Middle position thinks about it for a brief moment before folding. And it's going off to the second middle position player. 
who decides to make the fold. I can't. I guess I can't tell you because he's playing. If it was heads up, I would be honest. Okay, now I can be honest with you. <laughs> big hand. I'm a big hand. <laughs> that doesn't mean I don't want action. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. I'm making good prices here. A fun, you know, little bit of table talk there. It's nice to balance yourself out. People think that I only talk when I have the nuts. That is far from the truth. I think I just like talking. As you guys see, I've made nearly 100 episodes of me just sitting here talking about my poker hands. Either way, really happy with that. I think we learned there where aggression really does pay dividends and it's all about timing. I think in this situation, everything lined up perfectly. And obviously, you know, we won the hand, so it feels that way. But even if it didn't, I think that was a correct play to make. As you guys have seen, not a whole lot to go over post flop. There's not been a ton of really difficult decisions. And in this situation, we find ourselves in an interesting one as I find myself under the gun and look down at the beautiful big slick ace king of hearts. I decide to raise this to $35. Middle position, who's definitely been super, you know, high V pip in this situation, decides to make the flat. And the button, who's that really loose player we talked about earlier, decides to three bet to $180. From this angle, I see that he has right around $800 to $1,000 in his stack, and the gentleman in middle position has around five or $600 in his stack. Considering I think that my opponent has, you know, most of his stack at this point committed, I think it's best that I just jam here. It's not super GTO jamming what is going to end up being, I guess, 5x the raise, but with this middle position player who's shown the propensity to call a raise and then call a back raise, all in, which has happened once or twice to this point already. I'd rather just get this, you know, heads up or, you know, even if it goes three ways, whatever it is, what it is, just kind of run out all five cards. So I end up jamming for the old four bed here, making it a thousand dollars effective to go. The middle position player decides to fold, and now we find ourselves against the button player. He seems to be deep into the tank, and he's asking why I made it so large. No slow rolling allowed. I haven't met you enough yet. You should definitely call. <laughs> That's what you should do. But I'm not going to coach you. Uh, at this point, he lets me know that he has pocket jacks. And he asked me what I should do. I told him that he should call. I'd rather run it and play a pot here. But obviously, folding out a better hand is always great. My opponent takes my talk as a form of strength, which it is. I have a really good hand. And he ends up making the fold face up, showing pocket jacks. We're going to take that every day of the week. If he's a favorite, and we can get him to fold a better hand pre-flop and scoop in nearly $200 or $300 pre-flop for free. You know what? I'm going to take it. I don't have to go to showdown. That's better for me. And because he showed, I was kind enough to show him. And uh, yeah, hopefully that can pay us off later on if he just thinks that we're too aggressive. So far, this session hasn't had too many landmines, but it's only a poker session. If there's a little bit of pushback, whether you still win or lose, that's up to the cards to decide. Anyways, I find myself here in middle position. I raised two thirty-five dollars after looking down at Ace Four of Clubs. Only the big blind calls, and we're going off to a flop against this player that we've played a ton of hands with. It comes Jack Seven Four Rainbow. The action checks over to me. Considering my hand can use a ton of equity denial, I'd be considering checking back maybe A Seven on the turn here. But uh, bottom pair, I think we can use a little bit of equity denial as well as you know, there's just a great chance we can get called by some inferior hands. Anyways. So I end up making the C bet for a small sizing of around half pot, 30 bucks. My opponent pretty quickly makes a call. We're going off to a turn card that comes to five of diamonds. This does bring a backdoor flush draw. And it's a weird situation where my opponent decides to snap at 60 bucks. I don't know what this really means. Like I said, he's been pretty loose pre-flop, super passive. I end up making the call here, sensing some form of weakness. And the river card comes a 10 of clubs. At this point, my opponent starts thinking and fumbling with his chips, trying to get a read off me maybe, and trying to act really strong. This is obviously a form of weakness here. And when my opponent checks it over to me, I think my hand is just good enough to not have to bet as a bluff here. So I end up making the check back here. My opponent obviously likes that as he shows pocket sixes. I guess he got me to not bet the river and be put in a tough spot. Either way, you live and you learn. Can't kill myself over it. It looks like we missed a little opportunity to bluff him out. But again, my hand was just a little too strong to make the bluff, I think. Okay, so today's session is going about as boring as humanly possible. Probably very little hands to report. A lot of sea betting, a lot of small pop poker. But as we talk about many a time, it's important to show you guys the reality of playing poker. Not every single session is going to be a massive winner or a massive loser. It's about these little sessions where you just pop in, play for two, three hours, and see how much you can maximize and profit. We've made a couple pretty reasonable little folds that was uh, off the vlog, where we folded like second and third pair, which is 
kind of a miracle for me, but not a whole lot to go over. I appreciate you guys as always. And uh, yeah, make sure to check out the Telegram link at the very top of the description if you guys want to play with me and all your favorite vloggers on the Splash Squads. It's time for me to quickly hit the gift shop and then I am out. Well, I got to play like about another hour. Let's get some more hands. Hope you guys enjoy the episode. Make sure to like and comment and subscribe, guys. It goes such a long way. Help me continue to grow. Appreciate you guys as always. Forgive me for this next hand as I don't have the video. I was switching from seat one to seat two and didn't realize that I stopped the recording. Either way, you're just gonna have to believe me. We're gonna be going into this next hand as a super passive player that we've been talking about this whole session decides to land from early position. I'm the cutoff and I look down at ace 10 offsuit. This place is a great isolation. Not too many people behind me at this point were playing seven handed. So I decide to make it $50. Unfortunately, the button who's one of the few players that has position on me makes the call. The limper makes a call. The big one makes a call. We're going four ways off to a flop with over $200 in the middle. That comes ace, 10, seven. Jeez, I don't think I could have asked for a better flop, if I'm being quite honest. With the action checked over to me, I think betting around half pot is excellent. I'm just not scared about much here. Besides specifically eight, nine suited, there's just not a ton of drawing hands out there. Sure, there are some aces, and I think by betting half pot, I get all of them to call. So I make it a hundred bucks. Both the button and the limper make the call. The big blind makes a fold. And we're going off to a turn card that comes a deuce of diamonds. This does bring a backdoor flush draw. Sure, that does have a little bit of interest in the hand. But in reality, it's just really unlikely for my opponent to have flush draws here. I think I'm putting them here on middling pairs as well as some inferior aces. With the action checked over to me once again, I continue to apply the pressure on my opponents here. I'm going to be doing this with a bunch of combo draws myself. King Jack, Queen Jack of Diamonds both make sense. After a brief moment of thinking, I decide to bet $275, again going somewhere around half the size of the pot. Unfortunately for us, both of our opponents end up making the fold. The one thing I do want to talk about briefly, and I think you guys saw in the video clip here, is once again that early position player who now moved to CS to seat 9 did this thing where he fumbles with his chips, pretended to go all in and get aggressive. And after I, you know, doing that for what like felt like 30 seconds, the action turned on to me after he checked, I bet, and he pretty much quickly folded. And that's the same thing he did when he had pocket sixes when we had ace four clubs in the previous hand. So just a small thing to keep note of. I don't think this guy is balanced. I think if he has a weak hand, he's doing this. And that's something that you should be able to pick up at your games. If you ever see a really egregious tell, just kind of make a little note of it mentally. Maybe it can help you out in the future. Moving right along here, we find ourselves in another very interesting situation. We're playing six-handed here. Under the gun makes it 30 bucks. I look down at 7-4 suited here from the button. This is a pretty, you know, crummy hand, and it seems like I get myself in trouble with this hand. But I'm going to go ahead and just make the call here defending the button. Considering we're shorthanded, I don't mind just playing, you know, a little wider. Whether that's good or bad, I don't know. But we're going to be going off to a flop that comes ace, five, three, with two diamonds and a heart. We flop ourselves a gut shot as well as a backdoor draw. But my opponent decides to see bet for 25 bucks, going less than what he bet pre-flop. I'm sensing a little bit of a catch-all sizing. Maybe it could be a weak bet. Maybe it could be a strong bet. We won't know until we make the call, which we do. And we're going off to a turn card that is one of the better cards in the deck as it comes. A eight of clubs. We now pick up the double gutter here, the belly buster. We have a deuce or a six to give us the best hand. And when my opponent decides to check it over to me, I feel like at this point it's time to try to steal the pot. If he has a middling pair like tens, jacks, queens, we can probably get him to call one bet and maybe bluff on the river if I have to. I end up betting $65. He thinks about it for a brief moment before eventually making that call. And we're going off to the river that comes a king of clubs. Doesn't change much to the board here, and it's just not a card that's going to correlate with my range that's betting on the turn and calling on the flop all that much. Ace king would be a hand that exists, obviously, but not in my range, more than likely in his range. So after he checks over to me, I'm going to go against my better aggressive judgment, and I'm going to go ahead and check this back with seven high. This is the worst 10 I'm ever going to end up on this river with, and sure, you should bet sometimes, well, like 90% of the time, but in this instance, I just felt like I don't think I can get a weaker hand to fold that's like 10s through queens, so I end up making the check back. Unfortunately, my opponent ends up showing pocket sixes, so obviously, I think he folds that river. It's hard to tell for sure, but yeah... I'm a little bummed out. I feel like I'm a little gun on this one. We've been seeing, you know, a lot of spots where I'm going a little too crazy. And maybe this one is it as well. Either way, we end up losing this one. And we're going off to the next hand. And just like that, we find ourselves in the last hand of the session. This is a really big hand. 
But before we go into it again, I just want to thank you guys all for watching and enjoying today's episode. If you guys really did, make sure to click the like button, subscribe, and comment down below letting me know, you know, how do you guys kind of react to really slow sessions like this? Do you just kind of pick it up and go if the game's not that good? Do you guys just table change? If it's late, I think usually I just tend to just get home, you know, rack it up. But I'm interested in what you guys have to say. This does bring me to my next point, which is I've been playing for several hours here. I've been super car dead. The table's not very good here and it's not getting any better. So I'm playing the last few orbits I'll be playing as we're getting deep into the middle of the night. Under the gun decides to raise it $30. Seems like a pretty solid pro. Middle position decides to make the call. We just sat down and we look down at pocket sevens here on the button. I'm going to go ahead and make the call. We're going three ways off to a flop that comes absolutely perfect. King seven five. Man, this is what dreams are made of. There is a flush route there that does have a little bit of spice that's needed on this flop as for the most part, it's kind of dry. Sure, there's some straight draws and I guess flush draws that exist, but for the most part, not really worried about all that that much. The initial raiser decides to see bet for 30 bucks. The middle position player decides to raise to 100 bucks. I was going to min click it for $200, but then I thought, hey, that's going to be way too strong. I've got to allow these opponents to get more money in the middle. If a heart comes, we can deal with it then. But at the moment, I'm just not worried about a whole lot. We have middle set here. I end up just making the call, which again, still looks strong anyways. The initial raiser pretty quickly gets out of the way. We're going off to a turn card that comes a jack of clubs. At this point, my opponent seems to be loving his hand enough to go all in here for $400. A really big bet here that I'm never folding to. I snap call his bet. I immediately let him know that I have a set here. He flashes a jack. We're going off to a river card that comes a nine of spades. My opponent turns over king jack offsuit, and we're going to end up taking a massive pot down against a really, really cooler situation for my opponent. It is what it is. We're going to need that as that is a big bulk of today's profit. That's going to close out today's session. I appreciate you all for watching. Let's turn it over to me live in the flesh to see how I feel after today's session. Just like that, today's episode has come to an end. A fairly short session. I think we played for like two and a half hours, but it's getting a little late for me. I've got to get home and rest because although you guys would have already seen the live stream, I haven't put the video out because that's going to be episode 100. Tomorrow I'm playing in the live stream, which is going to be a 25-50-50 game, which is pretty big. Wanted to just get a quick session in, kind of, you know, get the feel for it because I hadn't played poker in a little bit. I haven't played for almost like five, six days, so... Did I get back in here? Um, it's interesting going out and doing stuff with friends and then having to just be able to sit yourself down and be like, all right, let's get some hours in. Today's session is pretty, pretty boring, except for the last hand, which obviously is a great time. There's something nice about winning some big pots. Um, nonetheless, we were into today's game for $1,600 and out for $2,257. I'm gonna take that every day of the week, a profit of just above $650. Like I said, that feels a wonderful, it's nice to get that little, you know, I don't know. I feel like I have to shake off the rust a little bit in preparation for tomorrow's game. So hopefully you guys would have enjoyed that live stream. And if you guys are excited to see that episode, that episode should be live next week, Wednesday, I believe. Uh, if you guys haven't already, make sure to do me the honor and the pleasure by clicking the subscribe button. Probably going to get bothered by the security right now. So just, uh, you know, deal with me with that. But make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. We're also going to be doing the... Um, Bankroll Challenge starting Monday. Again, the Bankroll Challenge is a really, really, really fun series. It's gonna be every single Monday, expect the Bankroll Challenge episode. My goal is to go from zero to 10K in some reasonably decent time, uh, playing LA 2, 3, and 1, 3, which is nearly impossible. If you guys know LA, the rake is horrific here. It's like six or seven dollars if you get it to the river. And uh, not only that, but you're lucky if you can find a place where you can play two, three, and buying for a max of 100 big blinds. For the most part here, it's a max of like some stupid like 40 bigs or 60 bigs. It's a complete joke. So most of this series is gonna go on at one of my least favorite casinos, which is the bike. But anyways, who cares? 
I appreciate you guys as always for continuing to support the videos. It goes such a long way. Just make sure you guys are doing me the honor by subscribing and liking and commenting. It helps our videos get into the algorithm, helps our little community continue to grow. I appreciate you guys as always, and so does the security guards here. They haven't bothered us yet, so they're doing the rounds. Anyways, stay happy, stay healthy, and more importantly, guys, we're gonna get at the tables. I love you guys all dearly. Super excited for the World Series of Poker, the change of pace, the change of scenery, the change of scenery, excuse me. I'm really excited to get in some tournaments. I'm excited to play some bigger cash games. This is all really exciting. Hopefully, I match this energy in tomorrow's live stream. I appreciate you guys all. Have a nice day. Deuces, y'all.